Hi, I'm Jonathan Daly. I'm the co-founder, lead programmer, and lead designer for Nacelle Games. I'd like to take a moment to ask you to uh, please follow us on Twitter at Nacelle Games and like us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Nacelle Games, and you can find us online at nacellegames.com. We're going to be going. We're going to be doing and going over a Unreal Engine 4 tutorial today. We have in here uh, in the engine loader up the first person template. So go ahead and click play to run around in here. So what we're going to look at today is this cube. It's kind of a nice looking cube. Got some uh, colors on the side, a little bit of detail in the front. Now right now uh, the material applied to it is a very flat matte color. What we're wanting to do though eventually is to take these colored sections like this one on the front, and make them very metallic and reflective. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, there's a couple things. First, we're going to do everything inside of the material. So this is the basic material that we have for this cube. First, we have a very simple texture sample that we've pulled in, and we have a roughness value of 1. Now, the roughness value of 1 lets us have a very mask uh, looking, or matte, rather, looking to this where there's not a lot of reflectivity. So the look we're going for is actually going to be to set the roughness to zero so that we now have a nice sheen on this. And then also we're going to push up the metallic amount. So what we need is a, uh, a single uh, dimensional value right here, uh, vector one basically. So a quick way to do that is to uh, hold the one key down on your keyboard and click and you'll get a nice single value like this. I'm going to collapse that down, pull this over to metallic, and we're going to set the metallic value to 1. So this is what we want eventually, and then we're going to set the roughness down actually to 0. So this is what we want eventually. We want it to be super reflective like this to look like it's made out of glass or very shiny metal. If we were to hit apply and let the uh, material compile, if we now go and look at the static mesh, you can see that um, it's very reflective now. Very, very reflective. And you can get like green sheens off depending and regular sheens depending on if you're hitting these colored sections. Now obviously we don't want the whole cube like this. We only want these colored portions to have that reflectivity. So let's go back and reset our material back to how we had originally. So we'll go ahead and delete the input for the metallic. We'll go into roughness here and set that back to 1. And now we have the matte look that we want for the background of the cube. So typically how you would do this and how we're going to do this today is use a texture mask where you can do a, a linear interpolation or a lerp between different values uh, inside that texture mask so that we can pull out these colored portions and just apply the metallic and roughness values to those. Now typically this involves having a second, a second texture, so a second texture sample. But to simplify things, what we can do is actually take that same information and hide it in the alpha channel for this texture. We're not using an alpha right now, nothing's going to be transparent, so that information, that data right now is being completely wasted. If we were to open up the texture that we're using and take a look at that, we can take a look and open up this texture and we see that if we go under view we have a red, green, blue, and alpha layers. So if we turn on the alpha, obviously nothing changes. If we turn off the blue and the green and the red, we can see everything's white. There's no information here. So we're going to use that basically blank canvas to draw something on it. Now what this will look like eventually in the engine, I have a preview here. This uh, right here is the same texture but it's actually output as a uh, Targa uh, type file instead of a PNG. And we have uh, to use Targa to do this because we need a 32-bit depth per pixel to be able to store the extra data. So if we were to open up this texture, which like I said looks exactly the same, but if we were to go into view and now turn on alpha, you can see I'd done all these kind of squigglies all over the place. Now, this is data that's being stored inside the alpha channel. So if we turn off blue, green, and red, we can see that we now have these squigglies in a black and white, basically grayscale looking uh, section here. So we're going to use this alpha channel to basically put our mask data in. Now, how do we do that? Let me turn these back on. How do we do that? Very simple. So I'm going to close this 
uh, file out, we're actually going to go head over into Photoshop. This is our texture. It is a 512 by 512 texture. I'm going to keep the size the same. Now, this was uh, drawn uh, underneath a UV snapshot that I pulled out of Maya, which is where I modeled the cube, our test cube. So we don't need the UV snapshot on. We'll turn that layer off. Now, we're going to be looking inside the channel section. So if we actually go over into channels, which is behind your layers, so if you have your layers panel up in Photoshop, it'll be behind there. Now, right now, we have uh, the RGB, uh, all the layers together, and then red, green, and blue. Now, we want an alpha layer. So right now, there isn't an alpha layer. So if we go down right here to the bottom where the new button is, go ahead and click that, we'll get a new texture or a new channel inside our texture, rather, and it's called Alpha 1. I like to rename this just to Alpha. It's to personal preference. It doesn't really matter what it's called. As long as it has the word Alpha in it, then Photoshop will know it's an Alpha channel and know how to handle it appropriately. So right now, it's completely black. Now, why is it black? Well, an Alpha channel, when we're putting data into it, it's all grayscale. As you see, if we you know pull up green here, if we draw inside green, uh, you can see that these right here, these circles, are really green, so they're really white. These other colors have virtually no green in them at all, which is why they're almost, they are, or really close to being completely black. Now, we're going to be drawing completely in our alpha layer. When we make a new alpha layer, there's no data here, so it's completely black. Now, what we actually need to do is go back to our RGB layers so that we're viewing all of those, and we actually need to go in to our uh, selection menu, and go down to uh, select and then color range. Now we actually want to select this background, this purple background. And right now we're selecting everything here that's white. So if we actually go and do a grayscale um, preview here, this is a really good preview of how the data is going to look when we're in there. Now like I said, black means absolutely nothing. As in there is no information there whatsoever. So it equates to being zero. White equates to being one when we're doing our linear interpolations inside our material. So we're selecting the background right now, but the background isn't actually what we want to be white. Now we're going to hit OK so that we're actually selecting our background, but then we want to go back into our selection menu and select inverse. The reason we want to select inverse is we just want to select anything that's not this purple background. That way these colored patches are the ones we're going to apply our metallic look to. So now if we go back into our alpha channel and just click on that, you can see our selection is still in place. So what we're going to do is make sure in our uh, color swatch here we have a white color selected. We're going to hit the G key to turn up our paint bucket and we're going to click and paint inside these circles. Now you can see that we've painted directly inside our alpha layer. Everything that we want that was colored and selected is now white, and the background is black. Now, if we go ahead and hit the M key to select the marquee material and then click out in the background, that way we don't have anything selected. If we now click the little eyeball icon next to RGB, we can see that we have kind of this reddish tint over everything. That red tint is where the alpha information is. So we can kind of see the, get a kind of a preview of how it will look. So we're going to go ahead and turn the alpha information off so we actually, actually we are actually seeing our colors here. So we're going to go ahead and save this, Control-S or Command-S. Now, we need to export this as a Targa texture. The reason we need to do Targa is because of how much information is stored on every pixel. So we're going to go to File, Save As, and um, I have uh, my nice Maya Tests folder up here where I was uh, put our test cube. So we're going to actually change the format down to Targa. And we're going to make sure alpha, la alpha Channels is selected. And click Save. Well, actually, I'm going to rename it uh, T underscore for, that's a prefix in Unreal Engine meaning texture. Totally optional, but I like to go ahead and have that. Uh, then I'm going to T test cube, and I'm going to underscore TGA. That way, I know that it's a Targa because the .tga ending doesn't show up in the content browser in Unreal Engine. So T test cube TGA, and then we're going to go ahead and click Save. Now we're going to get a pop-up box that says Targa Options. We want to make sure that 32 bits per pixel is selected. This is the reason why we need to do Targa 
because we need to make sure that we are uh, keeping intact all of that alpha data, all of that information that we've actually stored. If we put this down to 24 16 bit, we'd be losing some of that information. So we're going to go ahead and click OK, and it's going to save our file. Now we can go back into Unreal Engine. Now here is our, uh, our nice cube here. You know, it's still uh, how we left it, this nice matte material. Let's go back into our content browser. And now uh, this is the old target texture. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I don't need it anymore. Nobody's using it. And I'm going to right click and do import to game static meshes. And that's just the folder that I'm keeping everything in right now. And we're going to go find this ttestcubetga.gga. And we're going to click open. Now, when I was running some tests earlier, uh, I did not have the .tga extension on the end of the file, and Unreal Engine did not recognize it as a TGA file. So just make sure that it is marked as a TGA file in your finder or your file explorer. Now we've pulled this in. So if I go ahead and double click on this, we'll open up the texture, click on view, and go ahead and click on alpha. And now I can see that everything that's colored is its actual color, whereas everything else is black. This is good. This is exactly what we want. So if we uncheck blue, green, and red, we see that we now have these white uh, outlines. This is our texture mask. It's stored inside our alpha layer. So how are we going to use this? Let's go back into our material. Now we actually want to change what texture this is using. So we'll pop in our content browser, make sure our test cube underscore TGA uh, texture is selected. Go back into our material. And down here next to where the material expression texture base heading is, there's a texture and we can hit this little arrow to use the selected accent from the content browser. Now when we pull that in, it's gonna look exactly the same, which is fine. All we've changed is the alpha channel information. So the first thing I want to want to do is go ahead and adjust the roughness so that everything that's colored has a roughness of zero and everything that uh, is this purple background has a roughness of one. We need to use a linear interpolation node for that. The easiest way to do that is to hold down the L key on your keyboard and click and you'll get a lerp. So what we're going to do is the lerp values, there's a constant A, constant B, and a constant alpha. Now the alpha information is what is basically determining how the linear interpolation is being done or where it's being done. So we're going to go ahead and click on this bottom one here. This is the uh, on the texture sample, the bottom most or that white uh, dot that you can click and drag out from. That is the alpha information. So we're going to drag that down to alpha. Now the cool thing is I can uh, click this little down box here and it'll pop open a nice preview. So this is the information that this lerp is is pulling out right now, which is perfect. Now, uh, A to B is, A is going to be the, the zero amount, which is the black amount, and the B is the uh, one amount, which is going to be the white. So right now it's going zero to one. So we want, uh, actually though, on our roughness, we want everything that's black to be one and everything else to be zero. So we can actually flip these and say const A is one and const B is zero. So when we set those, now we can see that this flipped. So this is actually what we're pulling in, that we're going to be applying the value to this purple, or the white area, which is the same as the purple on the texture. Now we pull this out to our roughness. And now we can see, as we're pulling this around, when the light passes over the orange, you can see that it's very, very shiny. If we pass over the purple, it's not shiny anymore. And you can see the same thing. We can see some reflections in this purple portion. So that's half of what we want to do. So we can actually delete this extra node here that we don't need. That's half of what we want to do. We also want to have a metallic of zero on the purple and a metallic of one on the color. So we're going to hold down the L key again and click. And we'll get another linear interpolate node. Go ahead and click open the preview. So pull this down so we're not running... Uh, our lines together. We're going to pull this alpha information out again into the alpha node. Input. Now we have this uh, 0 to 1, which is perfect for what we want. We want a 1 value of metallic on all the white portions, which is the colored, and a value of 0 on all the black portions, which is the purple. So now we pull this over into metallic. 
And now when we look, we see, oh, look, everything that's colored is super metallic, but everything that's not isn't. So now we can go ahead and click Apply, and it will now apply the information to our material. And now I can go ahead and click Save. And if we jump back over into our example map after our shader compilation is complete, now we can go ahead and click Play. And now when we run around, we can see, oh, look, all these sides are super, super reflective, but the uh, purple isn't. So you can see it's fairly simple to put together a texture mask and embed it inside your alpha channel. Now, there's a little bit of, uh, you can see kind of a jagged edge here. And that basically comes down to how the texture was put together. When we created the texture mask, we only used two colors, black and white. We didn't use any shades of gray in the middle. It is very conceivable that when you're creating your alpha masks, you can have a more gradient-like effect at the edges of these areas. So there you have it. If you have any questions, please send us a message on Twitter or on Facebook. And again, that information is at Nacelle Games on Twitter and forward slash Nacelle Games on Facebook. Thanks for watching.